Now that you have viewed the first two videos about the metric system, Mr. Mills and I are very excited to introduce to you the third and final video. This particular video will discuss how measuring temperature is different in the metric system than our standard system of measurement you are used to and the process of measuring volume. Oh, and the picture on the left here is not a good answer to put on a future test if you are ever asked to change centimeters to meters. So just keep that in mind. And yes, believe it or not, the picture on the right saying 30 degrees Celsius is hot is true. To begin with, we would like to introduce to you the practice of measuring temperature in the metric system. To, to start, you should know that the device that we use to measure temperature is a thermometer or a digital probe. We should be used to using these already because no matter what we are measuring, when it comes to temperature, we always use a thermometer or a digital probe. The biggest difference you'll find so far is the unit of measure that is used in the metric temperature scale. That is Celsius. Typically you are used to seeing degrees Fahrenheit, but for metric, please become used to using degrees Celsius. Now the way that is abbreviated is seen right here. The small circle on the top uh, denoting degrees with the capital C. That means degrees Celsius. Not, de not circle F like you are used to seeing. Again, like I just mentioned, the English temperature scale uses Fahrenheit, but anytime we come to metric, please practice and become comfortable with Celsius. Now down here you can see that Mr. Melzen and I have included a table of English system and metric system temperatures for four different events or happenings. On the right, we have included the degrees Fahrenheit, which is English. We're not used to that though, or we are used to that, but we don't want that. We want degrees Celsius. And yes, we did have the answers here, but we decided that we wanted you to figure those out. So we covered them and provided a nice, pretty smiley face because we are very mean and want you to work. Uh, although there is a formula to convert from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius and vice versa, we are not really, anyway, we're not going to provide you with that formula. You can either find that online or in your book, but you do need to work to find that a little bit. Down here, these two pictures you can see, we have included a visual to understand what the difference between Fahrenheit and Celsius is, especially this picture on the left of the different degrees on a thermometer. So find that formula and please convert the degrees Fahrenheit on the right to degrees Celsius on the left. Now that you are somewhat familiar with the different temperatures in the metric system, you should be more comfortable understanding how degrees Celsius are different than degrees Fahrenheit. To show you what can happen to water at negative 30 degrees Celsius, we have included the following video of ice crystals forming in a soap bubble. Enjoy! Now the final practice in the metric system we want you to become comfortable with is measuring volume. Now in the metric system, volume is a little bit different than in the English system we're used to. Typically when we measure liquids in our system, we measure them in quarts or gallons or something like that. However, in the metric system, our base metric unit is liter. Milliliter, kiloliter, doesn't matter, we have liter. Now, the device we use to measure the volume of a liquid is a graduated cylinder. Simply put, graduated cylinder is a glass or plastic tube with lines on it. Those lines denote milliliters and will tell you how much volume a liquid has. Now it is very important to note that when using a graduated cylinder you need to read the meniscus in order to determine the volume of that liquid. On the right here you see a visual of a meniscus. This picture on the left shows what water does when it's put into a graduated cylinder and how it actually dips down like that. In order to find the volume, you do not look at the top part here on the sides. You actually look on the bottom of that meniscus where that dotted line is. Now on the right, some liquids will also form convexly, but no matter how it forms, you need to always read the center part of that meniscus. As we mentioned earlier, a quart in our English system and a liter in our metric system, those two are approximately the same. 
So that should help you become a little bit more comfortable uh, measuring liters. And down here we have the unit for the following metric abbreviations. Earlier we taught you that millimeters, lowercase m, lowercase m, equals millimeters. And lowercase m equals meter. Well, in this case, the abbreviation for liter is a capital L like you can see. So our prefix doesn't change, and no matter what we put, whether that's a CL, a DL, we will have the prefix liter. So in this case, we have milliliter. In addition, you will sometimes see the abbreviation CM cubed. What that stands for is cubic centimeters. That can also be abbreviated CC, standing for cubic centimeters. Now, when talking with most liquids, and particularly water, a cubic centimeter is equal to a milliliter. So those two terms can be interchangeable with certain liquids. However, it is important to note that not every liquid is equal in that sense. So for example, one particular liquid, a cubic centimeter may equal more or less than a milliliter. So please be aware of that. Next, we move on to the formula down here for calculating the volume of a solid. We talked to you about the volume of a liquid but it's also important to know how to find the, vo the volume of a solid. So I'm going to quick draw you a nice little 3D cube. I was never a great artist, but I will try my best. Uh, well, that's pretty bad, but it'll work. So we have our height of that cube, we have our length, that's how long it is, and we have our width. In order to find the volume, take your length times your width times your height. In this case it's pretty straightforward. We simply multiply these three values and that will give us the volume of that solid. While talking about the volume of a solid object it is important to know that the label oops, the label is centimeters cubed. We never uh, label a, the volume of a solid with milliliters. It's just cubic centimeters. Lastly you should become familiar with the term displacement. Simply put Displacement is when one object replaces another. So for example, if I have 10 milliliters of water and I take a solid block that has a volume of 10 cubic centimeters and I put that into that water, there will clearly be a displacement, which simply means that the solid being put into the liquid moves that liquid and takes up that space. To finish this video, we would like to complete a sample problem with you. In this problem, we will be converting 14 milliliters of a liquid to X amount of liters of that same liquid. So again, to start, we write our known. We have 14.0 milliliters. Now, if we look at our metric ladder, we know that we, moving from milli to the base unit of liters, includes three moves of the decimal. So we're going to have one, two, three. If we put our decimal there, we'll bring this down here so you can see it. So we have our decimal, our 1, and our 4, and we fill this in with a 0, and we put a 0 there. That gives us 0 0.014 liters, as you see up here. And it really is that simple. Again, you need to be comfortable using that metric ladder, but that can help you move uh, from any prefix to any unit um, in the metric system. Now that you have viewed this final video, you may complete problems 18 through 24 on the Moodle metric system practice quiz, and that will complete that quiz, and this also completes the series of three videos about the metric system. If you have any questions about any of these ideas or practices, please let us know and we can help you out. Thank you.